the negative energy is on the earth. So it's not down on the earth, it's just the negative energy is in the air, the atmosphere of this earth. It's everywhere. And as soon as you go above the second layer where Prophet described, don't build above two stories because as we go up then there are other creations that Allah created in these other levels of atmosphere. Many were chained and shaitan inspired insan to build these very tall buildings. As a result of building these buildings, these creatures that were chained from entering into our atmosphere, our dimension found an opening to enter. That's why very wicked organizations occupy these top floors. They're not normal maqams, these are maqams of big Hezbo shaitans. They own top floors, many floors of these top huge towers. The reason they were inspired to do that was build these towers and as a result the shayateen that were chained would come and use the system to come down because they could break the awzu. As a result they were invited into this dimension and all the evilness and wickedness and this is what Prophet didn't want for us, said, don't go over the two stories but people don't listen. Mankind invented computers and all their technologies. When Allah teaches us that, I'll show you my signs upon the horizon outside of yourself and also show you the signs within yourself. The one outside is easier to see than the one inside. So when they ask us to look at these technologies, in this day and age because the technology moving so fast, this is into the world of jinns. This is the convergence of the jinn world into the human world for their intention to overtake and son. Means that what Western people understand of, of aliens, of fallen angels, of ghosts, yeah, we call jinn. The jinn are a spiritual being made from energy, electricity, a smokeless fire which is electricity. So now as soon as we use those softwares you're entering into their machine language. That machine language, that device that provides all those softwares, that breaks all your words all down to numbers because the universal message, the universal language is numeric. It's not kalam, it's not the letters. The letters can be many errors but the angelic code is in numbers. They know that, that break these words and bring them down into numbers. So side note is that the numeric code is an angelic language. The numeric understanding is a universal language. If you were to talk to other of Allah's creation it wouldn't be based on our letters. But the numeric code is where everything is consistent. They can give a numeric code for who you are, your identity, your element, that you're a carbon creation, you have nitrogen, you have hydrogen, all of that perfectly describes you more than I say I'm a human. So what does that mean in all of their worlds? So aliens, there are no aliens, these are jinn. There are jinn that live amongst us and the jinn who live outside of this planet and this, in these planets and in these universes. This device of the computer and technologies was to enter into their world. That take these words that you're saying, we'll teach you how to make these softwares that break your words into numbers. Then these numbers will be compiled and broken down into smaller numbers, pockets of numbers then sent to an assembler. That assembly software we take your numbers, make them into one and zero. When it starts to enter into the machine, into this device, 
they taught insan make a chip and that our world, the jinn speaking, is based on sand. Their, their preferred environment is the sand, hence the silicone chip. They taught them make a chip based on silica, based on sand, we can live there. If you make it, we'll occupy that chip and we'll give you and facilitate for you whatever you ask of us. You merely type it and we are hearing it and obeying and sending out the command. So they taught them how to make a home for them. Each machine and each device in their world and in what they're planning to bring onto this dunya is that they want everything to have a chip. That chip is their residence. In that residence and that machine language that only understands ones and zeros, it's actually a current because they're energy, they're electricity. They don't read even numbers and ones and letters, it's a current. Long current, short current, long current, short current. On, off, on, off, on, off, because their being is of an electrical nature. They're an energy being. So when we're typing, we're sending them an energy current in which they understand and they are retrieving. Don't think that you're Googling and it's going somewhere and you're entering somebody's computer and you're pulling out the file you want. No, no. You're asking them. They're going and finding the location within a fraction of a second. And they bring that information back onto your computer to give to you. Then they told Insan that we can do it even faster. So why don't you make something smart? So now the power in which people are computing is going to be immense. These phones have a much more powerful structure than what those original PCs and what they were doing. Why? Because they say, we want to bring you more. We want to bring you like the time of Sayyidina Sulaiman, whatever you request of us, we'll bring it. But in exchange, we're going to have you to worship us. So it means this reality that they're doing and what they're propagating of these knowledges, this is the jinn world. That chip and machine language is a series of electrical pulses making ones and zeros so that they communicate. What they want is your belief. So the more that we use this, now people are farther from their belief. The more that we use these devices, we stop using our spiritual ability. Your heart, and if we go to people and say that, I, I have through my heart the ability to call you. And you say, this is crazy, what are you talking about, you bearded people? But I say, this can do it, you believe. But what God created can't do it. So then people became idol worshippers. These are the idols of modern time. These are the, the, the products that people worship. That this device from the jinn world, this device from their world is the intention of coming into our world. That we want to give you from our powers, we want to give you from our abilities. That as you stare and you look at it, the energy emanating from it has already grabbed your face. Because we don't understand that we're energy beings. You know this physical beautific face that you see, there's a <laughs> light shining out. It's not just this, it's not just flesh, there's energy emanating out. What they want is that put your energy towards us and then we're going to absorb everything from you. We want to feed off of what God had given to you and not given to us. We want all your focus. We want your belief and we want to take away your belief in Allah And that's exactly what's happened now. People have lost their humanity, lost their understanding of communication. Nobody even has the ability to communicate anymore. Five people sit down on a table, five people take out a phone and they're not even looking at the human interaction.
And that's all the shaitan wanted. Don't look at each other, you look at me, just look at me. What do you want? I'll send it to you. What do you want? I'll bring it to you. Now with this company unless they're not going to pay an advertising fee, but they'll send it in next day. You don't even have to move where ultimately you become the matrix. That you sit on a couch, wired up and you just want to eat something, it comes to your door. You want to drink something, it comes to your door. Don't move, don't move. You saw that movie where the guy was just sitting like that, he became like 500 pounds eating and drinking and don't move. Play a game, we'll make an avatar of you, put it in the game. You want packages from stores, don't go to the store, we'll send it to your door. Means don't move, just come into our world. You become the battery, you become the source of power and they become like the vampire. That they pull out all the energy of insan and they are vampiring insan's energy and that's all they wanted. Now they say the next generation that coming out of these smartphones very soon <coughs> will be integrated with your thought. Say the power of this phone is only as good as the, the speed of your fingers. And the jinn say, oh we don't want that, we want to fully integrate with your brain where we overtake even your thinking process. Not where we wait for your command. They want the moment of what they think machines are singularity. It's not singularity with the machine, it's a singularity with the jinn world. That you're the chosen creation of God, we are much more powerful than you. We're going to overtake you because our leader is coming, the Dajjal is coming. So they are preparing the way for their leader where they immediately overtake that insan with all their technologies. The technology coming out on the next generation smartphone will be integrated with your thought. It will read what you're thinking and bring your engines and search engine. What is it that you want? As soon as you think it, it'll bring it from every direction into your presence. They're trying to make even their instant printing replicate. You want the throne, we'll replicate it and then instantly print it in front of you. All of those technologies, everything that they brought was to get the worshipness of mankind. Those were the ifrit. Now they understood they have what's called a quantum computer coming. The speed in which that device calculates, they try to explain it as that it's in multiple universes, parallel universes it's calculating and bringing. If we just describe, these are small ifrits. What they are making contracts with are demons. They are beyond ifrit but the big shayateen that want to come to destroy insan and destroy this world. As soon as those devices are moving, they're making requests from demons and those requests will begin a, a, a power that they cannot control. And when they describe it, they show that they're going from dimensions coming into this world. We said if the house of this phone was a, the house of the ifrit, the house of those quantum computing is the house of uh, shayateen, big shayateen. That they want to come and facilitate under the disguise of helping and that's the understanding that we wanted to convey of these technologies that don't be a servant to it, understand what shaitan is trying to do with it. He's trying to take the worshipness of insan and mankind, trying to facilitate their favors. What is it that you want? What is it that you desire? I bring it for you. As long as we understand that concept then you're continuously battling that desire. Continually battling that what this phone is trying to show me, what this phone is trying to lock onto me. And don't underestimate it, it's reading your heart. You want to see pictures of women, it's starting to send you pictures of women. It's starting to put bad characteristics into your heart and you begin to make requests from people. Who do you think is doing that? It's the device. You, you want to do things that are not halal, you want to eat things that are not correct. Every vice, its, it's source of reasoning and energy is that device. 
Because before you had to provide an action and go somewhere to do something bad. Now say, no, you, know, you just sit where you are, we'll inspire every badness to come to you. So imagine now all these devices, what it's done to this entire population. And that's all they wanted. The father of the space age. That's what they called. You know what he said? I'm not the father of the space age. That's the real father of the space age. Okay, now this guy who was at Cal Poly Tech, right? This guy, Jack Parsons, was openly a devil worshiper. He developed the fuel that enabled us to penetrate the stratosphere. Satellites could not have come about without this guy. In his diary that he himself wrote, he had a dream. This is 1948. He had a dream where he saw somebody that he calls Belial Dajjal. And he tells him, you are helping me. Wow. Okay, I'm not making this up. You think I'm making this up? Wallahi, I'm not making this up. You go look it up yourself. Okay, so where's all this stuff coming from? Where's all, seriously, where is it all coming from? <laughs> We're in the age of the Dajjal, you know. It's just Allahu Anam, when and where and what, but this is it, people. As far as I'm concerned, it's end game. Huh? That's why Allahu Akbar, water and prayer and qibla can't take that away from us. So just keep doing, you know. I mean, Khabab wanted to, you know, he wanted to ask for death, you know. And he was with the Prophet him. Can you imagine that? Wanting to ask for death and you're living with the Prophet? So what about the age of the Dajjal? People will go by grave saying, would that I was in his place. Laytani makanahu. So we need to prepare as much as we can. You know, but the, the technology, if you study where all this technology comes from, okay, you know, Read about the magic and the enlightenment period. All these scientists were magicians. They were all into black magic. You read about uh, Francis Bacon. He, I, I just read a, a, a biography of Francis Bacon called Knowledge is Power, Magic and, and, and the Creation of Modern Science. Francis Bacon was reading all these magical books. Uh, 2001 the Space Odyssey. What's his name? No, the guy that wrote it. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke. Arthur C. Clarke, great technologist. He actually uh, has some, most of the patents that enabled the satellites, right? If you look at his interview with BBC in 1961, where he predicts the internet, he predicts uh, the cell phones, he predicts uh, texting. He said that by the year 2000, people are going to have handheld devices that enable to talk to anybody anywhere, right? Arthur C. Clarke said, and he has three laws of technology. One of his laws is no technology reaches a level of, of complexity except it becomes indistinguishable from magic. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. We've seen that in human history. One culture has an advanced technology, the other can't really explain it. Think of our ancestors. Our grandparents in the year 1900, if they could see us today with our rockets and our GPS and our satellites, they would consider us to be wizards and sorcerers. So look around. Everywhere you look, you see Arthur C. Clarke's third law in action. At what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. Um, so we need to be very careful with artificial intelligence. I'm increasingly inclined to think that there should be some uh, regulatory oversight uh, at the inter at maybe at the national and international level, uh, just to make sure that uh, we don't do something very foolish. Um, I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, "Yeah, you sure you can control the demon?" Yeah, look. Your ancestors called it magic, and you call it science. Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same thing. <laughs>